What's the deal with all of these emitters? Are you overwhelmed by the staggering amount of choices? Today, I'm going to cover the four main types of emitters used in drip irrigation and show you when and where to use them. Drip irrigation is an incredibly efficient way to water your plants when done correctly. It's easy to accidentally choose the wrong emitter in design that doesn't fit the needs of your garden, landscape, or even your personal needs like time and convenience. Some emitters take longer to install but offer higher efficiency. Some are easy to install but don't get you the precision that you may need in your garden. The four most common types of drip emitters are button drippers, drip line, adjustable drippers, and spray jets. The magic of drip irrigation is there are hundreds of combinations of emitters and designs that you can customize to fit your specific needs. After you understand the four most common drip emitter types in this video, we have a video titled How to Design a Drip Irrigation System that explains how you can use your knowledge of emitters to design an entire system around them and with our customizable kits, and this can be quick and easy. The link is in the top right in the description below. By the end of this video, you'll understand the options and differences between them and be able to choose what's best for your system. Ready? Let's get started. Drippers are what most people think of when they think of drip irrigation. There are two main types of dripper, button dripper and flag dripper. As their name suggests, this is based on their overall shape. A button dripper resembles a button and a flag dripper resembles a flag. These are what are referred to as point source or spot emitters, which means they are used to target a specific spot or plant, usually near its root zone. These drippers are efficient and precise, which helps reduce weed propagation and are perfect for a majority of smaller plant types. But for larger plants, it may take too many of them to use on a larger shrub, tree, or really busy beds with lots of ground cover and perennials. That's where the second and fourth emitters on my list really shine. So stick around for those and I'll show you in a minute. Most flag dripper types can be flushed for cleaning, whereas some button drippers cannot. Button drippers that aren't cleanable are often referred to as non-cleanable drippers, whereas drippers that can be opened up and cleaned are simply referred to as cleanable drippers. Non-cleanable drippers are usually a little more affordable than cleanable drippers, so there are many situations where if your water is clean, filtered, and not too hard, you can save some money by going with non-cleanable emitters. Flag drippers are also easy to break if stepped on, whereas button drippers aren't quite as easy to break when stepped on or kicked while out in the garden. The major difference between button drippers and flag drippers is that button drippers can be both pressure compensating and non-pressure compensating, whereas flag drippers are only available as non-pressure compensating. Pressure compensating means that drippers will drip uniformly over a range of incoming pressure. This is great if you need uniform performance. Pressure compensating drippers are good to use on landscapes and gardens with elevation changes as low points will be under more pressure than the high points. Without pressure compensation, some emitters may put out more or less water than others due to these elevation changes, even if they have the same stated flow rate. A pressure compensating dripper will compensate for that higher pressure and make it drip about the same as the ones at the high point. If you intend to use your emitter in a gravity irrigation system, such as with a rain barrel, you should use non-pressure compensating drippers. Pressure compensating drippers require a minimum pressure that you probably won't have in a gravity setup. One thing to note on drippers, both button and flag, is that some come with an outlet barb, such as this flag dripper and this button dripper. The outlet barb is designed to connect to microtubing. In this way, you can have your dripper in one location, just directly into the wall of your main line, and the plant you're watering in another location a few feet away from the dripper. This can be handy in places with a lot of foot traffic. You can tuck the dripper safely away on the main line, but still deliver water directly to the roots of your plant. Although we recommend adding a bug plug to the end to prevent bugs from setting up shop in the microtubing. Some drippers also come attached to a stake, whereas most just sit in the dirt, or you can add a stake to reduce the probability of clogging. There's also a dripper on stake available with an outlet barb, so it can be placed in line without punching into the main line for every dripper. There's even a type of dripper with an outlet barb and a special design that allows it to drip from the middle, allowing you to make a custom spaced and custom flow rate drip line. Drippers are the most common type of drip emitter and can be used in pretty much any application from potted plants to garden vegetables. Drippers are reliable and can get the job done. But if your plants are large, you might have to use a lot of drippers to get it irrigated, something that's not always ideal. So what do you do if you have trees or large shrubs that need to be watered? 
We're going to cover that next. Drip line, also known as emitter line, is simply tubing with pre-installed emitters at evenly spaced intervals. It's typically available in quarter inch and half inch sizes, and the spacing is variable. You can get six inch spacing, nine inch spacing, or 12 inch spacing. As long as you aren't exceeding the flow capacity of half inch tubing, which is right around 200 gallons per hour, depending on its length, you can also punch into the drip line to add emitters anywhere else you'd like along the run of the half inch drip line. Now, that isn't to say drip line is limited to gardens or landscapes with straight rows. One quarter inch drip line is flexible enough that it can be made into a ring that encircles a plant. This goes back to growing those larger shrubs and trees that we talked about. What makes this good is this gets emitters to all sides of the large plant's root zone, and this encourages even growth of the roots. One quarter inch drip line is most frequently used in beds that are shorter than 20 to 30 feet in length. One half inch drip line is used for longer rows, up to even 200 feet or longer in some cases. Since most one half inch drip line is pressure compensating, it's popular at vineyards with their long, undulating rows. Another kind of drip line is thin walled drip line, commonly known as drip tape. Drip tape is more commonly used in agricultural applications, but does have some use in garden and nursery applications. We've made an entire playlist all about drip tape that you can check out in the description or at the card in the top right. Adjustable drippers differ from the previously mentioned types for a couple of reasons. First, as their name implies, they're adjustable. Turning the adjustment cap on these can increase or decrease either the throw distance of the water and the volume of water that comes out. The adjustment cap can also be removed from the emitter in case of clogs or used to turn it completely off. This flexibility makes them a popular choice as you can gradually increase area and volume for a plant as it matures. They are available in both 180 and 360 degree options and a few different types of watering shapes, such as this umbrella spoke pattern, the vortex fan shape, and the mini bubbler full umbrella shape. Adjustable drippers are available on stakes, but are also available with traditional barbs to be placed on a one half inch line or with threads to be placed on rigid risers. Because they operate at low pressure, the water droplets tend to be heavy and much less prone to evaporation. They are also not available with pressure compensation since you can adjust the dripper to your desired flow rate. There are also adjustable drippers available with an outlet barb so they can be placed in line without punching into the main line for every dripper. If you're looking for an emitter that covers a large area, stick around for the last one that I'll mention after this. These see use in a wide variety of applications with potted plants, hanging baskets, and large pots being the most popular. They're also frequently used in landscape applications for thirstier plants where little area coverage can come in handy. Spray jets are available in 90, 180, and 360 degree options. Like the adjustable drippers mentioned previously, these provide area coverage. Spray jets are available in both adjustable and non-adjustable types. Like the adjustable drippers, adjustable spray jets can be adjusted to provide less or more area coverage and volume. Spray jets aren't pressure compensating, but in the rare instance where you need pressure compensation, flow control couplers are available. They operate at low pressure, but the water they emit is more like a spray than you see with the adjustable drippers. That does mean there's going to be more evaporation and effect from wind, but it also provides mist-loving plants like ferns, seed starts, and ground cover, an emitter type that's perfect for them. Spray jets are most often used where area coverage and large volumes are desired. Landscapes, patches of ground cover, flower beds, nurseries, and even some greenhouse misting applications. Essentially, you can use them anywhere that adding a dripper to every individual plant in a small area would be unnecessarily labor intensive and tedious. So, what do you pick? We see a lot of beginners become interested on one emitter type and then go all in on it, and this is not often always ideal. We encourage you to mix and match based on your specific needs. Anticipate what the water needs, spacing, and root zone of each plant will be, then select your emitters based on that. So, for example, if I have two raised bed, one entirely of closely planted lettuce and another entirely of tomatoes, I'd use quarter inch drip line with six inch spacing since lettuce is planted in closely spaced rows and two one gallon per hour emitters for each tomato plant since they're spaced further apart and have larger root zones. If I had hanging baskets nearby that I wanted to water, I would choose the adjustable drippers on stakes or, if possible, the ones that come on threads that I can use in a rigid riser. The reason I would do this is because baskets require area coverage and they're fast draining, so I want a higher flow area coverage emitter. Now, 
If you're ready to design your own drip irrigation system, check out our How to Design a Drip Irrigation System video right here. If you're ready to shop emitters and just jump right in, you can click right here.